it's your girl Jay and welcome to the K-List, where today we're counting down the five stages of a K-drama couple. So one of the biggest appeals of K-dramas is, of course, the couples. A lot of times the romance portion of K-dramas are the main focus. And there have been a lot of epic K-drama romances that really hugely impacted the K-drama world. However, the more K-dramas I watch, the more I notice that each couple seems to follow this formula or pattern. So today I thought it'd be fun to count down the five stages of a K-drama couple, starting with the horrible first encounter. So as a lot of you may notice, K-drama couples always seem to start off on the wrong foot and it's always due to this horrible first encounter. This usually occurs before they're formally introduced and involves some type of misunderstanding that results in them either being at odds, one of them hating the other, or just putting them in a really awkward situation. One example is the drama The Greatest Love. When Diesel's celebrity agent and top Hollywood star Doko Jin first interact, it actually occurs at a gas station. A Jung wanting to come off as like a highbrow top celebrity leans against Doko Jin's fancy celebrity van as if it was her own. Jin, who's in the car at the time, tries to shoo her away. And after a toss up between the two, the situation ends with Ajon getting an unwanted signature from Jin, who challenges her to find out who he is. Later on, a crazy incident that ends up with Ajon getting caught in Doko Jin's dressing room at a broadcasting station puts her face to face with the man behind the autograph. And you can probably guess that with the way he treated her back at the gas station, mixed with him catching her in his dressing room, they're not on the best of terms. What a great way to start off a relationship. Yeah. Moving on to stage two. Now this stage comes right after the couple has gotten off to a rocky start. And it's what I like to refer to as locked room lost key. Now this stage comes right after the couple has gotten off to this rocky start. Basically in this stage, the two individuals are just coincidentally put in a situation where they have to be in close contact with each other. Which is ironic because at this point, either one side of the couple doesn't want anything to do with the other, or they just don't want anything to do with each other. Take It's Okay That's Love for example. They actually end up living together when Jae actually becomes one of their roommates at the house that Hae-soo is currently living in after suggestion from one of his editors. Now this stage is really really important because this is where they're able to you know interact, get to know each other, and slowly start to fall in love. Either one side realizes the other side's not that bad or they clear up the misunderstanding. Now this process is usually intensified by the next stage. Stage three, a rival appears. Because where there's a K-drama, there is a love triangle. Now what's particularly interesting about this rivalry stage is that it raises the stakes. Often, even after the close interaction, the couple aren't 100% about how they feel about each other, haven't realized it yet, or are too scared to do anything about it. The rival kind of sets things off, pushing the guy or girl to do something about how they feel before they lose out. Take the drama EXO Next Door, for example. When EXO member Dio, who's crushing on his housemate, Yanhee realizes there might be some chemistry between fellow EXO member Chan Yeo and Yanhee, it prompts him to try to get close to her before it's too late. Moving on to stage four, the roadblock. Now this stage is almost a complete 180 from the rivalry stage because instead of adding gas to the budding romance, it almost brings it to a complete stop. Just when we think things are going well for our lovebirds, some big event or misunderstanding results in all of us questioning whether they'll be able to continue on. Now one of my favorite examples of this is the drama Boys Over Flowers. Commoner Goom Jandy and Jun Pyo, whose son and heir to the rich affluent dynasty, the Xinhua group, seem to be in a really good place where they've admitted feelings for each other and, you know, our boyfriend and girlfriend are dating. However, when news hits that Jun Pyo's father has died and he's going to have to take over his father's business, things change for him as now he has to assume this role and kind of take things more serious and he really doesn't have time for like a girlfriend and to hang out with his friends anymore. To better do this, he actually has to move abroad and this ends up with him and Goom Jandy not only talking to and interacting with each other for a significant period of time. To add insult to injury, he is then set up for an arranged marriage. So things like go from 0 to 80 in like a record time. Now I think this is really really interesting because we just hit a high with the characters, you know, understanding each other's feelings and you know, considering getting together and then all of a sudden it just takes this nose dive and throws her heart on this roller coaster. I can't, K-dramas, do you know what you do to me? 
But I think this part is really cool as well because rather than being something that tears a couple apart, it inevitably makes them stronger and leads us to the last stage. The big finish. Now the big finish can really be anything, but all in all, it basically just confirms that these two are in love, they're in it for the long haul, and they're committing to each other. Now some examples of the big finish might be a big, dramatic, romantic kiss, declaring love publicly, and cases where societal standards were keeping the two apart, maybe even renouncing that part of their life, such as going against the mom or family to be with that person. It's just some big event that leaves the viewer knowing that these two were made for each other, and they're probably going to be together for a long time. So that's it for this episode of The K-List, but as always guys, I want to know what you think. Are there any other dramas you can think of that follow this pattern? Let me know down below, and as always guys, if you want to check out more of me, hit me up on my channel, Daily Dose, where I just uploaded the third episode of my new K-pop podcast, The Daily Dose Podcast. Guys, I'm not really good at making names. Come on, I'm not very creative. And last but not least, if you want to see your favorite dramas, including the ones I talked about in this episode of The K-List, HD and ad free, make sure you sign up for Drama Fever Premium. Well, that's all for now, and see you next time on The K List. Almost Paradise! Wow. <laughs> oh. Hmm. I want to know me on We Are My Tender. Nochi Mwah. Sasha, you go.